Okay, so the next uh, section we're going to talk about are data sources and what type of data sources we're going to talk about. Well, we actually split this into two types of data sources. We have what we call traditional data sources. These are ones that have been around for a number of years. And then we have data sets that have been derived from the web crawling and the internet scanning that RiskIQ does. Okay. And we, those are what we call the crawling data sets, or you could just consider them more advanced data sets. Okay. So as we're introducing these traditional data sets, one of the things that we're going to do is explore what they look like inside of community.riskiq.com. So if you haven't already, make sure that you have an account and log in. What you'll be presented with is something that looks very similar to this screen, but maybe not exact. Before we actually run a query, I actually want to go through and quickly explore the account settings tab here up in the top right. And the reason for that is when you register for a new account, one of the things that we do is we, by default, stop any uh, query from going to an external source, uh, unless it's a risk IQ source. And so you'll notice here on the uh, sources down below uh, that some of them are checked. When you check those sources, it's going to produce different data sets. And so as we're running queries inside of our platform, keep in mind that it may look a little bit different for you, uh, but that there's no bugs or issues that, in fact, you're seeing the correct uh, data sets. If you want to go and change this yourself, you can go into the account settings again at the top right by clicking the person icon and clicking account settings. So what we're going to do for the data sets that we're walking through is actually explore passivetotal.org. And you can run that search directly from the search bar here. Uh, and I'm actually just going to go and use our history. So clicking passivetotal.org, what this is going to do is it's going to load up the interface itself. And we have our query at the top. We have some history here associated with it. And then directly below our query, we have a bit of metadata describing the first scene, last scene, some of the registration information, and then the option to categorize this infrastructure. And when we say categorize, we mean a couple of different things. One, has this website ever been compromised that we've observed? Does it appear to be a dynamic DNS provider? Uh, and two, from a classification perspective, is this a malicious, suspicious, non-malicious, or unknown website? Well, when you categorize, is that going to be just for me to see, or my team, or for the entire world to see? That's an excellent point, uh, especially knowing that analysts don't necessarily like to leak out information. Any action you do from a classification to applying custom tags within the platform is strictly tied to your account. It will not be shared with anyone else. However, if you do have an enterprise account, it'll be shared with your team there. So it might be something you want to consider. We like to leverage the uh, classification simply because by classifying something, you'll actually derive a tag from it. So in this case, I'm going to submit the fact that this uh, infrastructure is non-malicious. And when I go back and explore this in the future by refreshing the screen, what we're going to see here is a non-malicious tag that's been added to the infrastructure, as we can see here. Now, what's nice about this is that when I pivot around the system uh, and I see passivetotal.org in the future, I'm going to be seeing a, a color code that applies, uh, that corresponds to the, um, the classification that I set. So anything associated with passivetotal.org now will have that classification in the results? Yes, anything that, that has that exact domain match. Um, and what's nice about this is that as you're doing your investigation, you're pivoting around inside the system, it becomes incredibly valuable to have the classifications and the tag information, simply because it's a good way to figure out whether or not you've already looked at the infrastructure, or uh, to give you some additional metadata you may not have uh, seen otherwise. So directly below this bar here, uh, we have a couple different visuals. The first visual is our heat map, and that's showing a six month window of resolution history uh, that corresponds to particular days. So when, you, when I see a bunch of numbers, um, what do the, the numbers represent? So the numbers actually represent the unique number of resolutions that occurred on that particular day. Mm -hmm. So if we take uh, the example here of May 1st, uh, 2018, if I hover over that particular day, I see that there's two unique IP addresses that PassiveTotal.org is resolving to. So uh, there's also shapes in here as well. So what are the, the shapes? And I, there's a legend that's uh, in the upper right-hand corner. So what are uh, blue represents? So the blue is going to represent routable addresses. We spoke before about the cases where a malicious actor may choose to park their domain on non-routable infrastructure. So you'll see some color coding uh, in that regard, uh, depending on the query that you're running. And in regards to the shapes, uh, the rounded and uh, the rounded caps essentially represent the first and last month of a, of a particular uh, month. 
So in this case, it's May 1st, so it's the start of May. We have a nice little round uh, you know, representation here showing that it's the start of the month. So sometimes when an attack happens, it's over a particular window of time. Is yeah. there a way for me to focus my results to just show me during that time? Yeah, so there's two ways to do that. First, uh, you can actually click on a particular day inside of the heat map. And what this is going to do is it's going to constrain all of the data sets below to just that particular day. Mm -hmm. However, if I wanted to, I could shift click to a larger period of time within that six month window and again, filter all the results below. For me, I want to actually just go through and unselect this in general and have this go back uh, to normal. And one of the other uh, ways that we can filter out this data is using the time bar below. So we have a six month history that's the last six months and the time bar represents all of the information that we've seen. And this can become incredibly valuable just uh, if you're looking for a particular time slice. Maybe you're looking at a piece of infrastructure that um, is associated with log entries that is a year ago. What you can do in the time bar is actually hover over it, click this, and what it's going to do is it's going to actually re-render that six-month window above to just the data that matches during that period. And additionally, what it will do is it'll filter down the data in the table below um, to just the relevant material up to that period. Yeah, I see that there's some new information that showed up that it's a little triangle, so it shows that that was a new indicate a new IP address on that day. Yeah, that's exactly right. So again, following the legend here, just in case you forget, that little orange flag on the particular days is the first time that we saw a piece of infrastructure that was new. And what's nice about that is if I hover over that particular day, I can actually see that first seen value. In this case, it was a new IP address that we hadn't seen previously. That can be incredibly valuable for when you're doing an investigation. And then of course, directly below all of this information is all these different data tabs that we have available with the rich internet data that we'll be discussing further. So we're gonna start by covering the traditional data sets that we have available. And these include passive DNS, who is, subdomains, DNS, uh, and hashes within the system. Um, we'll cover some of the uh, projects in open source intelligence as well. Um, and what we're gonna be doing here is actually just using passivetotal.org as our example use case as we walk through uh, these particular data sets.